Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Essence. Welcome back. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Manos Hierakinis, and this one is called Immortel, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin the video, I just wanna say that if you like this type of content, if you like fragrance reviews and fragrance related content in general, please do consider subscribing to this channel. That's the only thing I will ask for. This way you can support me and what I love to do here on the platform. And also please remember to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. Today we're gonna to be reviewing a fragrance and this is one that was actually sent to me by the company for review. So I do wanna disclose that for all of my loyal subscribers, but I selected this fragrance only after after sampling all of the fragrances available in the collection and this one just so happened to be my favorite one. Now this one is called Immortel. Immortel is a floral ingredient and it's one of the few floral ingredients that I absolutely love. I love my irises, my roses, I like heliotrope as well, orange blossom I can deal with in the summer and Immortel has a slightly sweet smell which I can really appreciate and the way that it's used in here is this sort of gourmand twist where you have brown sugar and cinnamon and perhaps some sweet resins like benzoin. So it really amplifies that sweet overtone that the Immortel brings to the table. Now this one particular fragrance, if you are interested, it is available at Perfumology. This is not a sponsored video in any way. I just know that of all the boutiques that I have visited in either Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, the only place that I have seen this brand carried is actually at Perfumology. So, and I do believe that they make samples of it. So I'm going to leave a link down below, uh, but you can always order this one online if you are interested. So I'm really excited to get in a little bit more detail when it comes to the smell. Let's start with the presentation. So the presentation for this fragrance is quite minimal, just has the name of the company here in the front. It's Eau de Parfum Strength. Then you also see the logo up on the top. The box opens up to reveal a podium in which the bottle rests. It almost has like this slightly sturdy foam uh, padding on the bottom, more or less to protect the glass of the bottle. And again, the bottle is quite minimal. It just has the label here on the front, name of the fragrance. You have a sticker at the bottom with your information and the lot number is handwritten on there. The cap for this fragrance does click into place very securely. You can go ahead and pick this one up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer is a little bit narrow, but it gets the job done. Let's continue with the smell. So the opening of this fragrance is delightful. Uh, it opens up with this sugary smell that is just so inviting and so appealing. And I know it's 100% coming from the Immortel because the Immortel, the role that it plays in this fragrance is it contributes to this brown sugar accord that you have going on in the opening of the smell. And brown sugar, obviously, it is this sort of fantasy note or accord, and there are various different components coming together to give off that impression. And Immortel, like I said, is 100% the star player. I actually have Immortel essential oil, and one of the things that I appreciate about floral ingredients like heliotrope or Immortel is they have their own unique olfactory property that makes them stand out. And when they are used in fragrances, they don't really give the fragrance a floral smell. I know that's a very vague way of putting it. So like heliotrope smells like almond, um, Immortel smells like sugar. So they give off a really cool effect, right? As opposed to a perfume like um, Alien by Thierry Mugler, right? It contains jasmine and you, when you smell it, you're like, oh, this smells floral. Uh, so that's not necessarily the case with this fragrance. And by the way, when it comes to its olfactory classification, I think it's um, classified as an oriental vanilla or a gourmand even, right? So it has the cinnamon, it has the immortel, it has this brown sugar accord in the opening. And then it also has a little bit of benzoin in the dry down and the benzoin, uh, in my experience, and I also have benzoin essential oil, it's very thick and viscous and syrupy and sappy. And it has a bit of a medicinal overtone, but it also has this vanillic tinge to it. And this fragrance does contain vanilla as well. And so I'm getting that. And I think it's the inclusion of both the vanilla and the patchouli in here that kind of uh, set it into this olfactory, um, I'm sorry, this uh, oriental realm that I really appreciate. 
Now, in terms of it being um, an oriental fragrance, I don't think it's as spicy, with the exception of the cinnamon, of course. I don't think it's as spicy as other oriental perfumes that I've tried in the past. And so the star player here really is this immortal note, but it has this mostly sugary effect on the composition, which I think is really, really cool. Now, I think another note that's worth mentioning in here is this uh, lactonic note. So there's this note of warm milk. Now, does this really smell like milk to me? Uh, it doesn't. I can see how it's giving off an effect in the perfume and it has this lactonic component to it. But I think when you um, smell fragrances like, there's one by the company Fueguia. It's called Quilombo. It's an Argentinian company. And that fragrance, when you smell it, it honestly smells like you took a cup of milk and you microwaved it for 30 seconds. That's really how it smells. It's quite interesting. Here, it's not as lactonic as I expected it to be, but that doesn't take away or detract from the fact that you have this sort of sugary, caramelly sweetness in the opening. And I think it's a really delectable fragrance and especially one that I would find myself wearing a lot in the autumn. Now, this was kind of a recent acquisition of mine. I did get it back in 2019, to be frank. Uh, I didn't get a chance to wear it as much as I wanted to in the autumn and the uh, winter, but this is definitely one that I'm gonna be hanging on to. I'm gonna be wearing this one a lot uh, when it gets colder outside, especially when I have a sweet tooth, but I don't want anything that's overly sweet or sickeningly sweet. And there's nothing about this fragrance as well that smells puerile or juvenile or childish or anything like that. It doesn't have this sort of cotton candy, candy floss vibe going on in there. I know some fragrances that sort of give off that impression are like Sun Dazed by Byredo or Pink Sugar by Aqualina. You're not gonna get anything similar to that here, despite the fact that it has a sort of a sugary overtone. But again, it's more on account of the Immortel. So I do think that it has a very unique aroma. It's a very uh, approachable smell. It's one that is very likable. And it's one that I definitely see myself wearing a lot of when the weather gets a little bit colder outside. So I hope you have an opportunity to, at the very least, sample it. If you can either purchase a sample from Perfumology, or if you know of anybody else who has a sample, maybe they have a few mLs to spare with you. But I think it's a gorgeous scent, and it's definitely my favorite from the collection. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, there is truly no other fragrance out there that I have smelled that smells quite as unique as this fragrance does. Um, with all of the notes that are included in here, I know there's another fragrance by the company Baruti uh, that gets compared to this one, at least on Fragrantica. I haven't tried it personally, so I'm not sure if there is that much of a similarity to it. But I know with this one, I really haven't smelled anything in my experience that does smell similar to it. So kudos to the brand for uh, having much originality in their creations. None of them seem to be derivative or anything like that. In terms of the longevity on this one, you're gonna get eight hours. Uh, there were some days when uh, towards the tail end of 2019, I found myself getting anywhere between like six and seven. So I think it really depends on how much you apply and also where you wear it, right? If it's uh, a colder climate or if it's, you know, a warmer climate. So right around this time of the year, I think if it's a cool summer night, you can afford to wear this one as well. So I'm not saying you can't wear it when the weather gets a little bit hotter outside, but I do think that in terms of a lot of the notes that are included in here, it kind of puts me in the mindset of winter and autumn. Projection is great for the first two to two and a half hours. It didn't become a skin scent until about that six and a half hour mark. And so this one projects really, really well, and it will radiate within an arm's length. So it's not an elbow's length. So it's actually quite big, uh, the projection that you're gonna get from this one. But again, it's not overkill, so it's not over powerful, and I can appreciate that. In terms of the versatility, I know these are just recommendations. You're free to do whatever you want with your money. But in terms of the versatility, I can see this one working really well in a colder climate, like I said before. I think this one is perfectly unisex. There's something about that sugary sweetness that can go both ways. And I also think that this one could be worn by anybody of any age, uh, just because we see that a lot of the younger 
uh, demographics are sort of drawn to uh, sweeter scents. And so I think this one could cater to somebody who's perhaps a little bit younger, maybe early college, uh, but also to somebody who's in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond. I think this one is pretty versatile in all regards. And I think that this one would work really well in a formal scenario. But of course, if there's something about the smell that you absolutely love, hey, wear it casually as well. Wear it in the comfort of your own home, right? So the presentation on this one also looks very, very nice. Uh, it's very simple but elegant. My final verdict on this one is this is a fantastic benchmark fragrance when it comes to the use of the note of Immortel. And there are certain fragrances out there like Etro's uh, Heliotrope. When people ask me what does Heliotrope smell like, I say try this fragrance. When people say what does Rose smell like, I might say try Lyric Man by Amouage. So there are certain benchmark perfumes out there and when it comes to the note of Immortel, this is unquestionable questionably it. I really hope you have an opportunity to at the very least grab a sample of it. I think it's a gorgeous perfume. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Immortel by Manos Yerakinis. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please do go ahead and let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos, and that does include fragrance reviews just like this, top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, all that fragrance-related content. And please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on that bell icon. This way, whenever I do publish a new video and I try to publish every single day, you will be kept up to date and you will be notified right away. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time.